In this presentation, we will discuss the consequences of asphalt segregation in our pavements, how to properly address asphalt segregation on construction projects, and in what ways the District Materials Office can assist. Problems associated with asphalt segregation are serious and detrimental to our pavements. It typically allows for excess moisture damage and combined with low density characteristics, it creates premature pavement failures such as raveling, cracking, potholes, poor ride characteristics, poor pavement appearance, and reduces the pavement service life. Here is an example on State Road 64 west of Wachula where asphalt segregation has caused premature pavement failures. This pavement was constructed in 2004 and its main problem is a pattern of localized failures occurring approximately every 130 to 150 feet. These failures are attributed to a type of segregation called end of load segregation, which typically occurs due to improper paving operations between truckloads during its construction. Location one is shown here with a concentration of alligator cracking near the wheel paths. Looking westward, a next area can be seen about 137 feet away. Location 2 is shown here with a concentration of alligator cracking and is located 137 feet west of location 1. Looking westward, the next area can be seen about 133 feet away. Location 3 is shown here with a concentration of alligator cracking raveling and patched potholes. It is located 133 feet west of location 2. Looking westward, the next area can be seen about 146 feet away. Location 4 is shown here with a concentration of alligator cracking and patching of raveled areas. It is located 146 feet west of location 3. Looking westward, the next area can be seen about 151 feet away. Location 5 is shown here with a concentration of cracking and patches due to raveling. It is located 151 feet west of location 4. Looking westward, the next area can be seen about 145 feet away. State Road 64 was paved in May of 2004. It is scheduled to be resurfaced again in 2018. The balance of the roadway is in fairly good condition except for the areas of end of load segregation, which are heavily cracked and have minor patching due to raveling. The raveling process can happen rather quickly as seen on the active project on State Road 56 in Pasco County. This area located near the bridge at 186 plus 71 is segregated and has already begun to ravel out. In cases such as this one, no cores are necessary. The area must be removed and replaced. On US 17, just south of Wachula, the southbound one-way pair has reoccurring end of load segregation every 150 to 200 feet. These rough areas can be felt while driving on R1. The areas can be characterized by rough texture and fine alligator cracking. Very slight raveling has started. State Road 64 was paved in 2004 and is scheduled for resurfacing in 2018. The westbound lane is characterized by extensive alligator cracking and raveling. The adjacent eastbound lane shows no signs of distress. One of the causes of end of load segregation is placing mix that is cooled below the compaction temperature. In this case, it could be called the beginning of load segregation. This is a joint on State Road 37 South Florida Avenue in Lakeland. There is a highly raveled area on fairly new pavement. It is located in northbound direction, approximately in front of the Home Depot, just south of County Road 540A. Since 2012, the FDOT Standard Specification Section 330 contains language that allows department personnel to ask the contractor for three cores at locations visually identified to be segregated. The District Materials Office will provide support by testing the cores for density and providing the project administrator with the testing results. This language explains how the material needs to be addressed based on the testing results. Proper identification of segregated areas during asphalt pavement construction is very important. The department is vigilant about identifying asphalt segregation, especially the reoccurring type called end of load segregation. 
This type of segregation appears as a texture difference pattern, the spacing of which depends on the lift thickness. It typically occurs due to improper paving operations during the transition between truckloads. It can be very difficult to visually identify the severity of the segregation. As such, it is recommended to obtain and test cores to objectively determine the, its severity. Segregation must be identified as early as possible during pavement construction to minimize the reoccurrence and to allow the contractor to make corrections to his pavement operations. The PA and Redway VT should ride the new pavement within the first few days of placement to identify segregation issues. The PA and the Redway VT can contact the District Materials Office for assistance in identifying segregated areas. The following are steps to address visually segregated areas. If the area is located on a density tested area, first visually identify the limits of the segregated area, inform the project administrator and the contractor. After discussion with the project administrator, the IA inspector will mark three core locations within each segregated area. Ask the contractor to cut cores. The department will take custody of the cores for example, the first location of the project can be documented as location 1, include the lane, the station, and the name cores 1A, 1B, and 1C. Arrangements can be made to deliver the cores to the district materials laboratory or have a materials IA specialist pick up the cores from the QC's custody. The cores are then trimmed and tested for density by the district materials office. The testing results are provided to the project administrator and specification 330-9.2 is followed. Areas to be removed and replaced are marked including 50 feet on both sides. For example, the limits of the segregated areas are marked, then the removal limits are marked 50 feet beyond the segregated area limits. These new limits will identify the area to be removed and replaced. If the area is located in a non-density tested area, such as a small turn lane or ramps or open graded friction courses, first I'd visually identify the segregated areas to be marked in its location. Inform the project administrator to determine the areas that does not provide uniform texture as required in specification section 330-9.2. The department personnel can contact the district materials office if assistance is needed in identifying non-uniform textured areas. Here are some improper paving operations that can contribute to asphalt segregation. During the truck unloading, the material should be discharged as a mass. At the paver, the hopper should not become empty while paving. The contractor should maintain at least 25% of the hopper capacity while paving. The hopper wings should not be folded or dumped unless the hopper is relatively full. At the paver's augers, a proper head of material should always be maintained across the auger chamber. The augers should run continuously at a slow speed. The paver speed should be adjusted to balance the plant production and minimize paver stops. The roadway VT should document and observe these improper paving operations to inform the project administrator. Here are some key points to remember from this module. Asphalt segregation creates premature pavement failure. All personnel must be vigilant about improper paving operations and indicators of asphalt segregation. All roadway personnel, IA inspectors, verification technicians, project administrators, and RACs should ride the new pavement within the first few days after paving to ensure the pavement is free of segregation. It can be difficult to visually identify the severity of the segregation. Obtain cores when possible to objectively determine the severity of segregation. Key points to remember are as follows. There are many causes for segregation. All segregation will reduce pavement life. The department is vigilant about all types of segregation. Contact the district materials office for assistance in identifying segregated areas. This presentation was first produced by Rafael Rodriguez and modified for D1, D7 use by Troy Whitfield and narrated by Kenny Collier. The contact information is below. Thank you.